In the 21st century, humanity's fascination with the moon has been rekindled, not just by traditional spacefaring giants, but also by a new wave of dynamic nations. Among these, India and Japan have emerged as ambitious space powers, each wielding unique strengths and innovative strategies as they reach for lunar frontiers. But while both have made impressive strides, their approaches highlight distinct philosophies and technological paths. This prompts a crucial question. In the modern race to the moon, how can two different countries, one focused on reliability and cost effectiveness, the other on precision and private sector dynamism, not only coexist, but also collaborate? And what lessons can the world draw from their journeys? To decode this problem, watch until the end. A surprise awaits you. Subscribe to the channel now so you don't miss out on valuable knowledge and join me on the journey of independent scientists. Let us first examine the remarkable ascent of India's space program. Steered by the Indian Space Research Organization, or ISRO, India's lunar ambitions are marked by a philosophy of doing more with less. When Chandrayaan-3 made its historic landing near the moon's south pole in August 2023, the world took notice, not just of the achievement itself, but of the way it was accomplished. With a fraction of the budget of traditional space powers, India deployed a mission that included a reliable soft landing system and the Pragyan rover, which in its brief lunar day yielded valuable data about the moon's surface composition. This success was not without setbacks. The earlier Chandrayaan-2 mission in 2019 fell short of a soft landing, but ISRO responded by rigorously analyzing the failure, implementing technical improvements and conducting exhaustive testing. The result was a highly reliable mission profile for Chandrayaan-3, demonstrating India's capacity to learn swiftly and adapt. Furthermore, India's development of indigenous rocket technology, like the GSLV and the powerful LVM-3 launch vehicles, has granted the country autonomy in reaching space, minimizing dependency on foreign partners. A key to India's success lies in its disciplined management and use of proven technologies. ISRO's low-cost strategy is not merely about budget constraints, but about optimizing every aspect of mission design, execution, and resource allocation. The scientific instruments aboard Chandrayaan-3, such as the laser-induced breakdown spectroscope and the X-ray spectrometer, enabled the detection of crucial elements like sulfur and iron on the lunar surface. All of this was achieved while keeping costs dramatically lower than international counterparts. Looking forward, India's ambitions are growing. The Gaganyaan project aims to send Indian astronauts to the moon by 2040, and the construction of a national space station is slated for 2035. Chandrayaan-4, meanwhile, is set to return samples from the moon's south pole, targeting the extraction of water ice, a vital resource for future lunar exploration. Notably, India is also deepening international collaboration, especially with Japan, as seen in the upcoming LUPEX mission. Turning to Japan, we see a contrasting yet complementary approach led by the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, or JAXA, alongside a burgeoning private sector. Japan has carved out a niche in pinpoint landing technology. The Slim Lander, for instance, showcased the ability to touch down 
within a hundred meters of a target, an unprecedented level of accuracy compared to earlier missions that tolerated landing zones measured in kilometers despite the initial setbacks, such as solar panel issues, the mission underscored Japan's expertise in precision engineering. Japan's space prowess is also evident in its advanced robotics and materials science. The compact LF-1 and Sora-Q rovers, designed for nimble lunar exploration, reflect the country's leadership in miniaturized technology. Moreover, Japan's robust launch vehicles, including the HIA and the newer H-3 rockets, provide reliable platforms for a range of missions, although the latter continues to undergo refinement. A defining feature of Japan's lunar program is the active involvement of private companies. Startups like ISPACE have taken bold steps toward commercial lunar missions, exemplified by the Hakuto R project. Although not all attempts have succeeded, the spirit of innovation and willingness to take risks signal a maturing private space industry, destined to play a larger role in future exploration. Japan's vision extends beyond national projects. As a key partner in NASA's Artemis program, Japan is contributing technology and expertise, particularly for the Lunar Gateway, a planned outpost in lunar orbit. Japan is also pioneering research into lunar resource extraction, anticipating a future where the moon's materials can support sustained human activity. These parallel journeys set the stage for a fascinating comparison. India's strategy emphasizes reliability, autonomy, and cost efficiency, leveraging government-led initiatives and in-house technology development. Japan, on the other hand, prioritizes high-precision engineering, innovation through public-private partnerships, and active participation in global projects, where India excels in delivering results with lean budgets and robust systems. Japan shines in technological finesse and collaborative spirit. Yet, rather than competing, these two nations are increasingly finding synergy. The LUPEX mission exemplifies this new paradigm. By joining forces, India and Japan are pooling their respective strengths. India will provide a proven lunar lander, while Japan brings its heavyweight H3 launcher and a sophisticated rover capable of deep drilling and subsurface exploration. Together, they aim to unlock the secrets of the Moon's South Pole, particularly its reserves of water ice, a resource that could fuel future lunar outposts and interplanetary missions. This cooperation illustrates an emerging trend in space exploration. The age of cutthroat competition is giving way to strategic partnerships where nation leverage complementary capabilities to achieve shared goals. For India and Japan, collaboration means not only enhancing mission success, but also deepening technological exchange, fostering innovation and paving the way for joint ventures in the broader commercial space economy. If you've watched this far, congratulations. You are truly a precisionate scientific explorer, always persisting and conquering every challenge. Let's subscribe to the channel so we can keep on discovering together. In conclusion, the rise of India and Japan as lunar explorers offers a compelling study in contrasts and convergence. India's mastery of cost-effective reliable missions ish, and Japan's expertise in precision technology and private sector engagement are both invaluable assets in the next chapter of lunar discovery. Their willingness to work together signals a new era, one where global cooperation rather than rivalry shapes humanity's quest among the stars. 
As the world watches the unfolding story of these ambitious nations, one thing is clear. The future of lunar exploration will be written not by any single country, but by the collective efforts of those who dare to dream, innovate, and unite in pursuit of the unknown.